talk about the Kavanaugh hearing yesterday, which was a, a total mess in the very beginning and was saved, in my humble opinion, at the end. Now, let's back up a little bit and explain what's going on. How did we get here today? First of all, we all know that Judge Brett Kavanaugh is up for a Supreme Court justice nomination. Uh, today is Friday, September 28th, 2018. They're having a meeting right now to determine how they're going to go forward and vote. People like uh, Cory Booker and Kamala Harris, uh, presidential hopefuls of 2020, they're trying to abstain from voting. But I digress. The whole point is that there are allegations against Kavanaugh. Some of them are really crazy. Uh, people talking about he's involved in gang rapes uh, or was involved in gang rapes back in the 80s. He attacked some lady on the boat in the 80s. Really crazy stuff. There was some 4chan stuff out there that allegedly Michael Avenatti, the creepy porn lawyer for Stormy Daniels, got a hold of and reported. Really willy-nilly reckless reporting that's been happening over the past few days. So to get through all of that or through some of it, they had a hearing yesterday to have Christine Blasey Ford, who was the first accuser, speak, give her testimony, and then Kavanaugh will have his time to speak. Now, let's start from the very beginning because Christine Blasey Ford went first. Her testimony seemed like it could be believable, but at the same time, it seems like it was crafted by a person that understands how to leave things open. Now, she's a doctor. I'm not sure if she's some kind of psychiatrist, like a lot, you know, psychologist or whatever. But the way she was speaking was in the way that would make you feel like something did happen. And that there's a personal connection there. But at the same time, there are so many holes in it, it's almost impossible to link it directly to Brett Kavanaugh. But in the mind of a person that wants to believe Brett Kavanaugh is somehow guilty, then that might be enough to have that thought be confirmed. And what I mean by these holes is she would say things like, well, I don't really remember what year it was. I know I was 15, but I don't remember the year. I don't remember how I got to the place. I don't really remember exactly where it was. A lot of key points that you would need in order to make the case stick, right? Because you got to know the day, the time, the place, all that stuff in order for there to be an FBI investigation and whatnot. But we'll get to the FBI investigation in a little bit. But the testimony... I mean, to me, it wasn't really believable, but I understand how it would be to some. I was watching Fox News and people like Christine Harf and Chris Wallace talking about it was believable. She seemed credible. I'm not quite sure. And before we get to Brett Kavanaugh, a little bit more about Christine Ford. She said she did not want to come out publicly. She said that initially she typed something in the New York Times, one of these newspapers that uh, have an encrypted form. You can just leave tips. She put something there. Then or before the encrypted thing, she sent a letter to Diane Feinstein once she realized that Brett Kavanaugh was on the short list. But this was before the actual nomination. So some people are pointing to that. They said, well, the letter was sent out in July before Brett Kavanaugh was actually nominated but at the same time he was in the list he was in the running for the supreme court justice okay so it's not like she didn't know he could be there and a little bit of a sidebar but not really she said in 2012 she told a marriage counselor about the particular incident but she did not name brett kavanaugh although she did say this person could be a supreme court justice in the future now how would you know Six years ago that Brett Kavanaugh may be where he is today. There were quite a few things you could point to that would dispel her testimony. But to get back on it about the letter, she said she does not know how it got leaked. Diane Feinstein had the letter. She said that she didn't leak it. Her staff didn't leak it. But somebody leaked it, which is why we're here today. All right. The letter is what got reported to the news. And this is how the information got out. And this is why we're having the actual meeting. Uh, her testimony lasted for quite a while. There were quite a few questions asked. Uh, the questioner here, I forget her name. I think her name is Rachel. I'll put information about her in the box. She was brought on by the GOP to ask certain questions, really to kind of like poke holes in her testimony to get out of credibility. But it felt like more of a tea party. It wasn't really a lot of 
uh, tough questioning being asked. And we'll talk about the toughness factor a little bit later. And then you have Brett Kavanaugh after a break. Now, mind you, this uh, hearing started at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And I don't think Brett Kavanaugh came on until about 3 p.m. Eastern time. They took a break right around 2.15 for about 45 minutes. It might have been about 2 o'clock, actually. And it didn't come back until about 3 p.m. with Brett Kavanaugh. Now, after all the praise from a lot of the people on the right, on Fox News especially, talking about how credible Christine Blasey's Ford uh, testimony was and how detailed it was now you have the man of the hour brett kavanaugh come in with much more convincing testimony and evidence to back up his stance let's talk about the calendars first that's the elephant in the room people are saying oh he kept these calendars for 36 years and he's creepy for doing that well let's back up a little bit first brett kavanaugh said he had calendars from back when he was in high school and college that detail all of his activities on a day-to-day -day basis people said it was creepy people said it was weird but he explained why he did that his father also had calendars right they served as not only a kind of an agenda of sorts you can know what you're going to do from day to day it was also a diary this is not anything that's uncommon especially in the 70s and 80s to have a diary i mean even i had an agenda and a journal in high school i think it was a journal at first when you were a younger kid, elementary school, middle school, and then it became an agenda. You had to go get it um, right when the school year started. And in the agenda, you would write down what you got to do every day. That was something that I did for quite a while. And a lot of us did it because it was required. So I can imagine how it was before we had the Internet and stuff like that to, you know, keep track of everything you're going to do in a journal and a calendar and he said during christmas time his father would break out the calendars and they would go over the memories of that year and just you know have a family bonding moment he's kept calendars every year since he was in high school and his dad does the same thing so he has in my opinion the rock solid alibi of sorts first of all christine blasey Ford, like i said did not know what year really or what day or what time or anything but she didn't know she was 15 so by doing a little bit of math brett kavanaugh was like okay if it was a summer in 1982 first of all most of us worked we had summer jobs second of all i was gone out of town mostly every weekend if the party was on the weekend because of football practice all right and then when i was in town i was with x y and z person x y and z person and i can name their names he had first and last names all that good stuff he didn't say the last names on tv but he submitted the calendars to the people that were in the room that needed to see the evidence everything was documented okay this is much more than christine blasey Ford, who had nothing she was just like well it could have been 82 it could have been 83 i think i was 15 i don't know how i got there all this that in the third right then he said well if it was in the weekday i know what i was doing during the weekday i know if i was at a party i knew who was there i knew who wasn't there i wrote it down i had all my activities laid out for the day and i wasn't even that kind of kid he said he was a virgin all throughout high school and many years thereafter which probably means through most of college so this guy i mean is really kind of impenetrable in my humble opinion and his opening statement lasted what felt like an eternity i watched the entire thing i watched it from 10 to about 5 p.m his opening statement was long and it was very detailed and you could tell it came straight from the heart he got very emotional he couldn't really you know it was certain points we had to just stop and say okay I, you know let me just compose myself and get back on track but the man was super convincing he said that he wasn't even at these parties. He didn't even know these people that she's talking about. One key point he kept hammering home is that Christine Blasey Ford named certain people that were at this party. I think it might have been four people, including a very close friend of hers, a, a female friend. All of them have said that they do not remember a party happening like that. They don't remember a such thing. OK, even a very close friend. I don't remember that party. I don't know what you're talking about. OK, so. She has nothing, no witnesses to corroborate her statement, no real 
idea of when the party was, where the party was. She has nothing. She has just very vague statements to maybe place Brett Kavanaugh in a certain place. And Brett Kavanaugh did a very good job here. It was certain points where he was pretty angry and understandably so. I mean, you're being charged with or being accused of because it ain't no charges being brought here, obviously. But you're being accused of a sex crime that has never been your character before. You have been friends with women since you were in high school, college, that you're still friends with today and you're in your 50s. You're not that kind of guy. You're basically a choir boy. Now, the Democratic senators that were there tried to make him look like an alcoholic, a drunk, somebody who could not handle his liquor because he did admit to drinking in high school. One thing you got to understand is that the legal age of drinking in Maryland all throughout high school and college was 18. So if you are a senior in high school, it's actually legal to drink or it was during that particular point in time. So he said, yeah, I drank a few beers, but it wasn't like, you know, I'm stumbling drunk, passing out, blacking out, uh, going to going into rage and stuff like that. That's not me. That's how they were trying to paint him. Dick Durbin, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. This man was trying to get Brett Kavanaugh to <laughs> basically uh, pledge an oath to have the FBI investigate, which was the overarching theme of this whole thing. I think that the Democrats know that they don't really have much with the lady, Christine Blasey Ford. Uh, if they have the FBI investigate, they won't find anything. And Brett Kavanaugh said that he was like, look, this is not about uh, being innocent or guilty as far as uh, criminally. I'm not going to go to jail or anything. This is not going to be brought up in court. All it's going to be is a fact finding process. The same thing we're doing right now. So what's the point of having this push for the FBI investigation, but he didn't say he didn't want it. He was like, whatever y'all want me to do, I'm here. But he, what I think he wanted to say is, I'll do whatever needs to be done, but don't try to get me to lobby for you to delay the process of getting me voted in. Because that's all it is at this point. Like I said, I think they know they don't have much with Christine Blasey Ford. But it doesn't really matter because if they're able to get the FBI investigation, they're able to delay the vote until after the midterms. That is the main thing here. I'm not really sure what Christine Blasey Ford's motive is. It could be just out of uh, confusion. Maybe she thought it was him and was not. It could be because she does not like the president. I don't really know, but I do know what the Democrats are doing. They're trying to use this as a political thing. I believe that Dime Feinstein's staff leaked the letter because how else would the letter get out to the press or knowledge of it get out to the press? I believe they're using it to try and get the FBI investigation to delay the actual vote or to abort the vote altogether. That's pretty much what it is here. So while the motives of Christine Blasey Ford are not totally clear. The motives of the Democratic Party are crystal clear. So that's pretty much all I got to say. I'll link to some stuff in the box below. I'll link to the entire thing in full. If you want to sit there for 10 hours and watch it, go for it. But uh, I think I pretty much summed everything up. So what do you think? Do you think that Christine Blasey Ford is in on this? Do you think that she's part of the greater conspiracy to get Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation vote delayed until after the midterms or aborted totally. Do you think that Brett Kavanaugh did this? Have you seen Brett Kavanaugh's testimony? Uh, I did. And like I said, it was fantastic. His opening statement was long. It was detailed. It was emotional compared to Christine Blasey Ford having a opening statement and general testimony that was full of foes when they asked her about her friend that does not remember having that party or going to the party she was like well maybe she has medical problems and that was pretty much it so how do medical problems allegedly according to you explain her denying ever gone to a party like that or having any knowledge of it how do you really explain that like, I know you were a doctor, but did you diagnose your friend? What you do over the phone or through the Internet, through the TV or whatever? And one last thing, Lindsey Graham, you earn my respect, boss. During the election, you had this whole never Trump vibe. I didn't really like that too much. You kind of came off as a, you know, a neocon 
Maybe you still are. I don't really know. But during this particular hearing, you did great. You brought that fire that was needed. The questioner for the GOP did not bring the fire. She was just acting as kind of a, I don't know, an arbiter of sorts. Just asking a fact finder. That's what it is. Asking questions, not really pressing too hard, you know, wearing kid gloves. But Lindsey Graham did great. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below.